I'm Ashley Heideman from JD Advising, and in this video, we're going to be talking about firm offer. So first, what we're going to do is define what a firm offer is, and we're going to start by just briefly defining offer. So what is an offer? If you just use the textbook definition, you might say, an offer is a manifestation of intent to enter into a bargain, so maybe it's justify another and understanding his assent is invited, we'll conclude it. Restatement section 24. But nobody knows what that means, okay? So let's define what a, an offer is in simple terms. An offer basically has two elements, intent to enter into a contract and specific terms. So if I say, I will sell you my phone for $500, I am manifesting an intent to enter into a contract. I'm saying I'll give you my phone for $500, okay? The next element is specific terms. And to keep things simple, just remember that the basic terms that need to be in an offer are price, quantity, and identity of the parties. So price, quantity, and identity of the parties. Now each of these three things has exceptions, okay? And each could be its own lecture. But for our sake, we're just gonna keep it simple. Price, quantity, and identity of the parties. So when I say I'll sell you my phone for $500, we have a price, $500. We have a quantity, one phone, and the parties are identified because I said I will sell you my phone for $500. So we have an offer, all right? Um, why? Because there's a manifestation of intent to enter into a contract and there are these specific terms, price, quantity, and identity of the parties. The general rule is an offer can be revoked any time before it's accepted. So any time before you say, deal, I'll buy your phone, I can revoke my offer. Revoke is just a fancy word to mean take it back, all right? I put my offer on the table, I can take it away any time before you accept it. All right, so if I just wanted to, I could go around for fun and create and then revoke offers all day. I could say, sell you my phone, I'll sell you my phone for $500, never mind, I won't. I'll sell you this pen for $2, never mind, I won't. As long as I revoke it before you say, I accept or deal, I'll buy that phone for $500. Um, as long as I revoke it before I hear those words, that's legally what I'm able to do. I can just create offers and revoke them all day. Create an offer, take it away. Put it on the table, take it away. Um, anytime before it's accepted, okay? That's the general rule. But there are four exceptions to this general rule. And conveniently, the mnemonic we use is four. Um, so the four exceptions are firm offer, an option contract, beginning performance on a unilateral contract, and reasonably foreseeable, justifiable, substantial reliance on an offer. Okay, so firm offer, option contract, beginning performance on a unilateral contract, and reasonably foreseeable, substantial reliance on an offer. The one that we're going to focus on right now is a firm offer. Now, a firm offer is just what it sounds like. It's an offer that is firm. That means it cannot be created and then taken away at the offeror's discretion. Instead, the offeror has to hold open that offer for some period of time. Now, what's the rule for a firm offer? How do you create a firm offer? I want to read the rule and then we're going to talk about what it means. So an offer may not be revoked if, and the mnemonic we use is mass, the offer is made by a merchant or someone who deals in goods of that kind, it gives assurances that it will be held open, it's a contract for the sale of goods under the UCC, there is a signed writing and it's held open for a stated time or a reasonable time will be implied but either way it cannot be held open over three months so even if the firm offer says five months the court will say nope three months is the cap okay it cannot be held open for longer than three months so what does this mean and why does this exist i find it helpful to memorize the nuances of this rule if you understand why it exists basically it holds merchants to a little bit of a higher standard like, let's say I sell perfume, 
and I have a new expensive fancy perfume that I'm selling and you really want to buy a bottle of the perfume and you say, Ashley, I'm, I love the perfume. I really want to buy a bottle. I'm just not sure I can afford it right now. Um, can you keep open the offer for the perfume for three days? And I say, sure. And I take a bottle of perfume and I set it aside and I put in a signed writing that I will keep this offer open for three days. I'm a merchant, okay? I'm, I deal in goods of these kinds. I should know that my writing means something. So if I say I'm gonna hold open that offer for three days, then I'm legally required to keep that offer open for three days. Okay, because I'm a merchant, I gave assurance, uh, it's for the sale of goods, this is an assigned writing, and there's a stated time of three days. So that means during that three day time period, even if you haven't yet accepted the offer, I cannot just revoke it. Okay, I have to wait till the three days is over. There are two common mistakes that people make with this. The first common mistake is that some people think both parties have to be merchants. Public policy would dictate that both parties do not have to be merchants. And in fact, it's only the offeror. It's only the person making the offer. And that makes sense because why would we say that the customer has to be a merchant? Um, the person who is making the firm offer should have to be a merchant because they're held to this higher standard. So only that offeror has to be a merchant. The other party does not have to be. The second mistake that people make with this is they assume that the default is three months when really a reasonable time is three months. And I, I, I'm sorry, a reasonable time is implied and three months is the cap. So for example, let's say that you come to me and I am selling signed copies of a famous author's book. And I only have 100 signed copies and I'm selling 10 a day. So in all likelihood, in 10 days, they'll be sold out. And you say, Ashley, I really love this author. I want a signed copy of the book. Um, I just don't know if I can afford it. Can I, I'm going to go home and think about it. Can you just set aside a book for me? And I, sh I say, sure, I'll do that. No problem. And I put in a signed writing that I'm going to hold open the offer for you. How long do I have to keep that book aside for you? A lot of students would say, oh, three months. But that's not the rule. Look at what the rule states. It says, um, the contract, I'm sorry, the offer is held open for a stated time or a reasonable time will be implied, but either way it cannot be held open for over three months. So three months is the cap, but it's not the default. The default is a reasonable time. And honestly, if there's 10 books selling every day and I only have 100 books, there's no way a court would say three months is a reasonable time. Instead, the court will probably say like one or two days is reasonable, um, but they won't say that I have to keep that book aside for you for three months. So hopefully this helps you understand what a firm offer is and why this exception exists.